Alrighty. I think I got everything. Oop. Hey, at least it didn't bump the... Okay. I think that's good. I don't know. I hope that's good. Doesn't look straight, but look straight. Oh no. Anywho, greetings and salutations. My name is Tish, and welcome to the Artist Haven, where home plus art equals heart. In tonight's live video, da 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 da, Stone Cold Countertop. <laughs> I got my resin order. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> And we are going to cover these two canvases. Um, these were the only two I could find. Um, I'm going to be totally upfront and honest with y'all. I was sleeping until about 20 minutes ago. Um, I laid down because I'm not used to taking medication. I don't even take Advil because it makes my stomach upset. Well, I got an upset stomach today. Um, and I've been fighting it and fighting it and fighting it and... About 3 o'clock, I laid down because I was just like, okay, I'm just going to rest. It'll make me feel better. And I laid down. I fell asleep watching some Roberto Blake video. <laughs> and I had nothing against Roberto Blake. He's a great guy. But I fell asleep and I woke up at 10 after 6. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, hang on, I got moved. And then when I went to go set up the camera for <laughs> for the live stream, it fell off the pegboard thing that I had it attached to. And I'm like, well, perfect opportunity to change my camera setup. Because, you know, I can bump the table and you all don't wiggle. So, <laughs> so if I'm a seam a little disorganized, it's because I am. All right. Who do we got with us today? Uh, Brenda, welcome. Blair, hello. And it's Carrie, hello. And there's my Jay, hello, baby. I'm grateful you all could be here with uh, with me tonight. Um, so I have never worked with resin in this way before. I've done resin in the um silicone molds to put on my art pieces or on furniture or that kind of thing but I've never done anything like this before so bear with me I've got medicine brain and I'm trying to remember I know it's a one-to-one -one ratio and I had to reorganize everything so everything is kind of I put it there's a shelf over there on this side of the table so it's a wire shelf from Home Depot I'm gonna go grab two more of them this week or at least one more um they're like forty dollars a piece or something but um I need more shelf space guys I <laughs> I got too much stuff like artsy stuff okay but anyway that's what I was working on today and I think I think just I mean between the head pressure and everything I just wasn't feeling well so I'm gonna still get into this but I gotta reorganize stuff here so how has your guys day been going I have had a great day up until about 2 33 o'clock and I just couldn't do it anymore um had a great live with uh vid IQ and um a great live with TubeBuddy which I only caught the last little bit of but then I watched the replay of learned some great YouTube ticks tricks and tips and started implementing some of them as I was doing some other things um also Jay uh, Lipman who has been helping me learn um Res uh, Da Vinci Resolve he had a live today too so it was a lot of fun and information and maybe um Maybe too much information <laughs> and my brain got overloaded. So, and there's Elisa. Hello, honey. Okay, so what my thinking was, where'd they go? Is because they're ratio, they're based on ratio. I would use either these cups or where'd my, no, they're there. I have about a bajillion Dixie cups. 
I figured they're one use product. I can fill them. But now I gotta find something to put it all in to mix it in. And they say an ounce per square foot, so I'm thinking three ounce. These are two ounce cups, I think. Looks about right to be two ounces. So I figure if I do two of these of the hardener and two of these of the, of the actual resin, that should give me more than enough. Maybe only one. One and one. I just seem like things like that, unless I find a small container to mix that in, that's a really little bit to mix. I don't know. But <clears throat> let me show you what I got from um, Stone Coat. Um, I don't know if the sale is going on anymore. Um, I didn't get a chance to double check. But, um, oh, you know what? It just dawned on me. Elisa, I'm so glad you're here because you're my resin queen. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't remember how to do this. Okay, so anyway, um, so I got, this is a half gallon kit. Um, so it's a quarter gallon and a quarter gallon. So um, a quart and a quart. I don't know why they didn't say that. Um, but for you Canadians and outside of the U.S., it's 0.94 liters. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing resin. I got my resin today. Look, it's so cool. And I got the big ones too. I got the gallon kit too, but that's in my bedroom still. And I forgot to grab that. I like grabbed everything, tucked it under my arm. I even forgot to grab orange juice. So um, I might ask you to talk amongst yourselves for a moment while I grab orange juice. But I want to um, talk about the sale that they had. I don't know if it's still going on. Uh, maybe someone can help um with that whole information but I found out because I had to call in my order because I needed a signature requirement for mine because I live in a not so nice neighborhood and I didn't want FedEx to leave a $200 plus box sitting outside my front door we have a lot of problems with drugs and crime and stuff in our neighborhood it's not it's not like there's murders and all that kind of weird stuff it's just people are shady um, so I found out that if you call in your order, you can upgrade their, um, half gallon sale was $49.99 or something like that. It was like 50 bucks for $5 more. You could upgrade it to the art grade, to the art coat. So that's what I did. So, um, was three ounces per square foot is what stone coat recommends me personally. I use that if I'm just coating if I'm arting, then I do four ounces a square foot. Gotcha. I think I can remember that. Three and four. So, um, do you find it mixes different um, if you do like a really small dose, like a really small batch between that and a, a bigger batch? Like say if I were to do two ounces and two ounces versus eight ounces and eight ounces, do you find that it mixes up differently, that you have more bubbles or, you know, that kind of thing? I've never used this before. I've been doing a lot of research, but not a lot of people say how they exactly, how they measure it and what results they get and all that kind of stuff. So I, I've got the, te I got te techniques down, but I'm still a little lost on the whole mixing part. So, okay, so we got the, the half gallon kit, which came with half gallon of stone coat art coat then this is the fun part look at all of these look all of these i'm so excited oh okay and i do have those okay oh a little bit of stranger here okay so they're all fly falling apart let's stack them up like cards there we go so we got black metallic Rainforest green metallic, gold metallic, white metallic, deep silver metallic, which I think is probably my favorite. And then, okay, here's one for Jason, coffee metallic, blue earth metallic, copper metallic, which I think is one of my favorites too. And then I got two glitters, black glitter and silver glitter. So, um, 
those all came with that $55 kit. So you got resin and all this stuff for 55 bucks plus shipping. I figured, well, if I'm going to buy that, I'm going to get another gallon because shipping is shipping. And one thing that I learned about when I was making soaps is buy in bulk because then your cost actually goes down in shipping for one, you know, your like shipping costs. Like if you bought 16 bottles of fragrance oils, because I was buying fragrance oils in bulk and I would buy them by the pound. So it'd be 16 bottles. Um, so you divide the shipping cost between 16 bottles and you add that to your cost per ounce. And then you'd add that to your cost in your soap bar. Well, if you bought one bottle, it was still $15 for shipping. And I forgot to turn off my notifications. Sorry, guys. Um, so when you're in a business, you got to count all these costs into your costs. You can't just say, oh, I'll just pay for shipping, whatever. Because shipping can get expensive, especially when you're buying heavy product. Um, I used to buy my oils, um, coconut oil and shea butter and, you know, everything that I couldn't get locally, I'd buy it from a company down in Chicago. And um, my waxes that I'd buy for my um, candles, I actually went and grabbed my, I would drive down and drive back because even with bulk shipping and 200 pound discount and all that other stuff, it was still cheaper for me to drive the hour and a half down and hour and a half back because it was, it was four hours of my time and like 10 bucks in gas. So um, I'd take my minivan, go down. There was a place in Southern Minnesota that used to sell it. I don't even know if they do anymore. I don't even know if they exist anymore. I don't want to do candles for at least three years, so I haven't done research on it. I do want to get back into candles. I really, really want to get back into soap. That's why some of these these micas are um, kind of fun and stuff, but I want to see if I can find micas that are soap safe, that are skin safe, as well as I can use for arting. So playing with these will bring me back to playing with soap because um, if you have me as friends on Facebook, I have some actual pictures of my soaps that I used to make on my Facebook page, um, my personal Facebook page. So I, I loved making, I called it functional art. So, um, but then, wait, there's more. Um, mixing it, will, let's see here, where are we? Oh, I missed something. Hang on, I'm, I'm scrolling back up. I had to put my computer on a shelf, so it's a little awkward. Um, I got everything. <laughs> the ring doorbell because people taking packages and you live in a good neighborhood. Yeah, I know that too. Yeah, it's sketchy walking here after dark. I, I, that's why I go for my walks in the morning when the sun comes up. So, um, yeah, the save 15 code was just a temporary code, but I, um, what I got, I got that on here too. So I got like super bargain deal, but, um, they have kits on there and I wonder if they have the kits on there. My, my laptop's too slow. Um, it's older than like dirt. So, um, it, it's right after the Arbacus was invented. So, or Abacus, Abacus. Where you get Arbacus? Anyways. Um, okay, I usually do, I do usually end up with extra, but it's better to have more than not enough. It's the same no matter how much you are. Just make sure it's equal by volume for art coat. I, you know, I'm going to do that with coasters. I think that's what I'll do tomorrow night is we'll do some coasters with the different colors and stuff. But I just want to see, get a feel for it tonight. And these are two paintings. If it doesn't turn out perfect, I'm okay with that. You know, these are some um, paintings that were a result of um, my YouTube 100 videos. Um, this one was from 826, so August 26th. This is a Dutch pour with the airbrush and hair dryer. So this is my first uh, double Dutch pour. I call them double Dutch pours because you use two forms of air. So 
Um, and this is from 8-22, so August 22nd. And it, it, these are just paint. They're not um, any silicone or anything like that. So I just wiped them down with a damp rag to get dust off of them and left it at that. Um, mixing it fast will create bubbles. But unless you're doing a pour, it doesn't really matter because you'll pop them. I do have a heat gun. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it's at. The aliens are coming. Yep. <laughs> it's a Star Trek. It's, the, it's one of the Star Trek sound effects. Okay. Check out Brambleberry for micas and powders for soap. I got some of them for resin. Brambleberry is a good source. Um, They're a good source for really good fragrance oils, too. Um, For soaps and for candles. Um, I'm trying to remember the name. There's one called Bitter Creek Candle Supply Company. Um, they used to have a limited stock of, of mica powders, and they're in Wisconsin. So um, I was going to see if I could find some there. Um, that's where I used to get a lot of my candle um, candle fragrances, and because uh, they were candle safe and bath and body safe and soap safe. So I did a lot of testing in soaps and a lot of testing in candles. And once I get a house and I have room for all this stuff, then I'll start experimenting again and retesting and everything. Because I, I made soy candles that had a beeswax coated cotton um, wick. They were CD, the CD line. So um, I'm going to have to retest. And I don't know if I want to do just container candles or if I want to go back and doing into votives and pillars and stuff. Because that's a lot of time consuming. Ugh. So I might just go back into containers and do just mason jars again. Just do mason jars and do the pint size and quart size, you know, the wide mouth ones and leave it at that and not get any fancier than that. Because the scent is amazing and they burn forever. So, um, and I got to see if my wax is still around. Because a lot of the stuff I have by memory, because I used to make so many of them, but um, I lost all my notebooks for my candle making. I have them for my soap making. I have them for my soap making and my bath and body, like my bath bombs and all that kind of stuff. So that won't be a hard thing. These are eight by tens. I'm not going to do any colors. I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to do clear, um, coat on them just to kind of see how it flows and see what kind of thing because um, I've decided that instead of trying to do um, a clear coat like a, a varnish or whatever on here I'm just going to cover all my paintings that I have for sale um, in resin. Um, I won a, a canvas from Mixed Media Girl Marcy um, back in like January and I just love the look of it and I think it made all the color she did it was a resin pour with um mountain it was like it looked like mountain sky and then it had mountains in it and it reminded me of Colorado and I'm like god that'd be really cool to win that and then I won it it was really cool so um but I just liked the way that the, even the acrylic that she painted with I love the way it looked underneath that and and I just it makes it almost three-dimensional which it probably was three-dimensional dimensional oh boy <laughs> it probably was three-dimensional but you know a little bit but this just made it pop you know just it just was really cool and I'm going to try it on these and if I still like it that's what I'm going to do with all of my paintings and just leave it at that just keep it simple keep it basic don't try and do all these different sealants and stuff I've got clear coat up the wazoo for my for my furniture so it's not like I'd have to go out and buy anything but yeah oh let's see I'm going to have to get headphones. Sunshine keeps looking for you and Bart. <laughs> oh, poor puppy. Hi, puppy. Hi, Blair's puppy. <laughs> I have to resubscribe. Yeah, uh, Brenda, the notifications are all kinds of screwed up. So, I don't know. I went with people that I wasn't getting subscriptions to or notifications from. I unsubscribed. And then I refreshed the page, and then I subscribed again, and then hit the little notification bell and hit all. 
and that seemed to fix it for me for most people. There are a couple of pages that I'm moderator for, so I've been kind of scared to do that, but I know that they're going to be on at certain times, so I don't need to worry about that. So, okay. Only need four ounces for coating. So if I use my little Dixie cups here, if I do, well, that one's dirty. We won't want to use that one. So if I do these, these are, I think these are two ounces. Do one of each side, one of, well, I could do two of each. And then if we have some ready or left over, I can, um, I could mix up a little bit of color and put it on a coaster. Cause I've got coasters. I just have to go grab them. They're just the tiles. They're easy. They're nothing special, but anyway, where was I going with all of this? Oh, there was one more thing that I ordered too, or actually four more things that I ordered. And these are the alumina, alumina dust. Alu I have a hard time saying aluminum. I have to like stop and think about what I am saying when I say aluminum. When I saw Doctor Who as a child and they said aluminium, I'm like, hallelujah. So I started saying aluminium all the time. People thought I was nuts, but they always thought I was nuts. So I've got this interference green, I think it's called. That's the, and I got the green. I got the blue, I got the red, and of course, me being me, I got the purple too. So I got these all, because these were all on sale. So, yeah, that I can use these cups, because these portion cups, does it say what size they are? I just remembered that I had them sitting here. Ah, brain. So I don't have any measuring cups empty or clean right now doesn't say hey made in Canada <laughs> Burnbury Burnaby Burnaby hey they're made by you Jay or distributed by you they're made in China okay so these don't say how much they are it gives a recycling code but it doesn't say I'm assuming these are two ounces anyway We had a great blizzard in 91. The only reason why I remember that is because my son was born in 92. <laughs> I know I love British speak too. And when I, there's a couple of my friends that have done lives. Um, if you guys like violin, sincerely, you need to check out uh, Magdalena Helen. Um, I'll put a link to her stuff in the description of this um, video. She does covers of like um, popular songs and she comes up with the, the sound, the, 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 the music herself and does a cover of it and it's amazeballs. But she had a, she did a live and I was like, you're just so adorable because she lives, I think she lives in Leeds or she went to college in Leeds and she lives somewhere, she lives in London. So something like that. But it's so fun to listen to her talk and then other people that I know on face on YouTube they're British and just adorable. Leron. Leron is funny. I love him. Anyway. Well, the that's where these are like packaged at or something. I don't know. It says it right on the back here. Imported by. So they're they're imported in Canada by for in and then in, in, so they're either imported and packaged there. I'm assuming they're imported and then packaged. Anyway, a lot of stuff comes from Canada, especially stuff from my job. I bought generic plastic cups and I just measured out an ounce of water and marked it on the cup, keeping adding ounces and marking it till I got close to the top. I use a master cup to other not to others. Well, it doesn't it just have to be equal ratios? So if I fill one cup and then fill another cup and then dump them together in in a third cup, I can do that, right? Because I don't have any kind of measuring anything. My measuring cups are all full of paint right now because that's one of the things that I was supposed to do today. Um, but I do have a little cup that I can mix in. Think. 
these should work. They look dirty. I'm so organized. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm usually more on top of it than this. Okay, so I've got a yogurt cup. And if I put one full Dixie cup of one and one full Dixie cup of another in there, it should be okay, right? Oh my gosh, now you're making me paranoid. <laughs> well, they'd be... Oh, hang on a second. Is it in here? Oh, I bet you it's in my room. I have those little medicine cups. I think I'm going to be okay with these. Because I'm pretty good. I'm pretty accurate at measuring. So, I mean, I did do measuring for a business. Making soap and then doing that kind of... the. I'm doing all the bakery stuff. And I was doing baking way before that. So I'm going to move the canvases out of the way. So they're not in my way. Okay, do I need to shake the resin before I use it? I'm going to take it out of here somehow. Wow, they have this heat shield in here. Holy Hannah. Okay. Where's my knife? There it is. I even broke out, look, I was looking for this earlier, because this is my paint, when I paint, like, walls and stuff, I have the paint wands that go to, and I got this old drill for, like, four bucks, and the char the battery charger fix fits in with my new Ryobi stuff, so, I'm like, yes, so, I bought that, like, three years ago, I got rid of the old charger because the thing was is that the I got that and the circular saw well the circular saw didn't work so I brought that to the recycling center and then the battery charger went kaput and I plugged it into the new Ryobi stuff and it works just fine those are heavy I can't imagine trying to do the big one oh, Hannah, I'm gonna have an issue. okay you do want to make sure it's not too close to the top so it doesn't splash Yes. If you get lucky, no. If you start doing what you need to do, put my foot down. I love you, Jay, but damn it. <laughs> He'll be graduating high school by June, hopefully. If everything goes as planned. Okay. That seems really far away now. I got used to it being really close, but I guess it's only, like, that much shorter than the last one, so. Okay, do we like this new camera setup? At least this way I can hit the table and not have you be all wiggly with anticipation. Okay, I had to move the... You know what? Hold on one second. I'm so, so sorry that I'm so disorganized. I need to go get some juice. I will be right back. One thing when I was cleaning, I found my craisins. That was awesome. Because <laughs> I bought craisins at the dollar store and I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. And here they were behind my computer. I'm like, how did you end up there, you crazy things? Okay. So, I'm going to use these. And we're going to do... Oh, what's poking me? Oh, my stool. Okay, move that out of the way. I'm going to sit down and do this because I don't want to screw it up. We're not going to use that stick. We're going to use one of these clean ones. That one's chipped. Okay. So, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of my way. Alright. So...
don't be paranoid. Yeah, that's easier said than done. I'm, I'm, I'm a perfectionist, so that's some of the things that I battle inside of my head. It's like, just let it go, you know? And then all of a sudden, the, the other song pops into my head, and then it's like, no, no. But anyway, okay. No, you don't need to shake it, but well, that's your day, mean I thought, thanks. Laugh at my suffering. No, I'm just kidding. I'm glad I could make you laugh today. <laughs> well, I didn't know. And I'm one of those people where I want to shake everything because, you know, it's a thing. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, if I have more of the A, it's actually okay. It's the B that I have to make sure that is, that's the more important one. Because someone was telling me that if you do it in small amounts like this, and you can actually put your color in here before you even add the hardener, and that'll extend your working time. I don't know. I don't remember where I heard that. It could be, it could be fake news. Okay. I love craisins. Oh, don't even talk about coffee, Blair. I didn't even get a chance to make coffee today, just because I'm just, yeah, I got distracted. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. I need help. I needed help having that song stuck in my head. Hey, Jason. Phenomenon. <laughs> okay. So, here we go. Drum roll. Okay, Tish, don't screw this up. Okay, so, move this out of the way. I'm going to put the cup up here. Holy Hannah, that's like pouring syrup. I didn't think it was going to be that thick. And you know what? There is literally very little smell to this. And yes, I am congested, but you that other resin, you could smell that at 40 paces. Okay, so... That's a smidge from the top. Well, stop, I say. Okay. There we go. Does anything have more hardener than resin? And always add A into B. Okay, so I'm going to put B in this container first. Got it. The thing I like about the Dixie cups, though, is I don't, I can scrape it out a little bit, but I can smush the rest of it out, too. Okay. This seems a little bit more. That was like, that was like corn syrup. Like, dude, stop. Okay. Bring it up to the top. Okay. Okay, I gotta sit down before I drop it. Okay, we're going to bring this over here so I can have them side by side. Okay. That's pretty darn close. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Probably not because I'm far away. Okay, let's get these guys out of the way. I'm going to put them down on the floor. Okay, so when I ask where they're at, they're down on the floor. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put this one in here first. That one's a little stinky. Not bad, though. Not as bad as that other stuff. Holy Toledo. Okay, so squishy, squishy. Okay, I'm going to put that in my little garbage bucket. It is very th thick. You can have more A than B. Okay. See, that's what I thought. I always thought you could have more res more of the resin than the hardener. Because it's the same way with the the cheesy stuff that you get. You have to mix it and have it poured in like 30 seconds. Okay. So, I don't have a timer. So, wait. I do have my clock on my phone. Or on my... I probably shouldn't have squished it right now. 
I probably should have put on gloves too, hey? Oh well. That's the joy of being me. Okay, we're gonna smush it up even more. And we're gonna roll it like a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> I was never very good at that. Oh well, I must have got some on my finger. Yep. Okay, don't spill it. Hey, that worked out perfect because there's just enough space in the bucket. All right. Now, it's 7.06. 7.07, perfect timing for it to click over because that way I know how long to stir this for. So, Get the hardener into the resin. And it doesn't, you know, it does, most things, if, if it's going to give me a migraine or something, I can't work with. That's why I don't like that other epoxy, because it, it's not good for my head. I, I mean, I was working with it this summer, just playing around. And, um, and I had the, my bedroom window open and the big patio door window open. Um, big patio door open and fans in both the windows blowing well one was blowing in and the other one was blowing out and man there's some tool for you um i got an email <laughs> i think i i just set up the phone with a bunch of cool things and i don't remember which one's which um but um I had such a headache from using it. I use all my spray paints outside. I do have a spray station set up inside right by the door here um, that I can use in the winter time. And I'll put both my box fans stacked up on each other and blow out the door even when it's 30 below. Because it's like 80 degrees in here. And I, you know what, I turned off my heat. I turned it off. I turned it all the way down to like 55 and it's still like 80 degrees in here. So I got a lot of bubbles in here, but that's okay. Scrape your sides bottom and the stick along the way. If you whip it, you'll get mad bubbles. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to treat it like like uh, royal icing because you don't want bubbles in royal icing either. But I, I'm notorious for scraping sides because even when I'm just doing it like this, I'm scraping the side and the bottom and then I go back and forth. So. This reminds me of mixing, because um, I would mix my colorants, my micas and oxides and stuff um, in, oh good, we're good, because um, I don't see any wispies and it's been two minutes, so it's nice and clear. Lots of bubbles though, but I would mix my colorants for my soaps, because I did cold process and hot process and milk and pour. I did all three, um, but... Um, I'd mix it in vegetable glycerin, and then that way the the color, I'd mix it in with it'd be I'd warm it up, warm up the vegetable glycerin, and then um, and then I would pour it in my soap as needed. So I'm gonna grab some gloves. They're just down here, right here. So there's a hack for you soap makers if you're out there. Let's see. We'll use my fancy schmancy gloves. I love the. I don't know if you guys use these gloves or not, but when I'm working with uh, TSP or um, my primer that I use, these are. The, I actually wear gloves when I do that because it's shellac based and that stuff does not wash off your hands. Nope, that stuff's on you for a week, unless you're working in a job where you wash your hands a lot. Okay, here we go. Got gloves. Let's sit down so I can focus. Okay. Here we, okay. Where'd my torch go? Okay, so I've got my torch. 
and I'm going to put some on here. It's weird wearing gloves because I normally don't wear gloves. So, I'm just going to put some on here, just like this. Okay. So, it's a little about half. It's sincerely, it's like corn syrup. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. Alright, so I put half on one side and half on the other. Now, Stone Coat does their whole chopping thing. Do I need to do that on this kind of thing? Or do I want to just use my stick and do that kind of thing? So I'm just going to kind of move it around here. And I did tighten the canvas again. So it's not... How do I want to do this? These are pores! No chopping. Okay. So I'm just trying to make sure I got all the middle. Okay. Do I want to like tilt this like I do with a cr or like when I do when I'm doing my pores, or do I just want to kind of move it with my hands or? I mean, I don't care which way. Either way it will work for me. I'm just trying to get it out. Get it even. Probably want to pop the bubbles first, huh? I didn't break out my new... my new. See, I, I'm just so bad. I hate being sick. Spread it around however you want. Stick hand clear coats are easier. Just with your hands, it's just everything is covered. That makes sense. It'd be easier to get to feel. That's okay. Well, we're gonna pop bubbles and then I'm gonna kind of spread it out with my hands because the stick thing is kind of annoying. I mean, I'm not trying to be all picky and stuff, but I mostly wanted to make sure that I got any of the divots that were, like, any spaces that I missed in the middle out. So now that way, at least I know I got it from edge to edge, and I can see the bubbles floating up already. That's awesome! And I think this board is not level, because I know my table is level, so... I don't know. I need to take my boards outside and paint them all. I need to just get some cheap paint and paint all my boards. So, I need a rag. Eek. Ugh. Okay. Wow, this, this even works on... Okay. Because I don't want to get resin on my, on my paint thing. Um, on my paint. When this thing dies, I'll be sad. <laughs> I'll be really sad. Oh, wow, these colors. Oh, my gosh. Ta da. <laughs> I get so excited. I'm such a dork. I told my one friend, Leela, that I'm an art dork. Or an art nerd. I just, I just love playing with everything. I love playing with everything. I, I'm an ADD artist. I need to have my hands in all the stuff. Okay, so we're going to set this one aside. 
and I'm just going to use my hands and I'm just going to kind of pat it over the edge. I've never done this before guys so if this doesn't turn out please don't laugh at me. Holy oh, yeah, hand there's a bunch in there. All right. Gonna move it side to side, and then we're gonna just cover the edges too. Then I'm gonna go side to side this way. Okay, there's that one. Whoa, so pretty! Doesn't really matter, but it'll help heat it up a little bit to get spread butter. Stone coat has long working time, so it's a thinner resin. Heat it, so heat it isn't needed much. Okay. isopropyl alcohol. I need to get some more of that. I have like three bottles, but they're all almost gone. So I am, um, I was doing some, um, more research into acrylic pores and I'm like, I need to get some more isopropyl alcohol because there was a pouring technique. And I can't remember his name now that was using isopropyl alcohol. And I'm like, the cells he got were just really cool. And it was just, he squirted some in in between the layers of his colors. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Because then you wouldn't have to clean your painting. You know? Because I don't I know I know our code is supposed to say, oh yeah, we can work with silicone, we can work with all these things. But I still want to make sure that, you know, as much silicone is off of there as possible. So these have a little bit of a bow to them still, but I'm hoping that I'm getting it even enough where it won't be apparent in the dried product. If it is, then we'll just do another coat because I've got enough to last me for a little while. Because there are a few paintings that once I know I know what I'm doing, um, I'm going to... Okay, there's one that I have to fix a little bit because there was a bug on it or something and it, and I run by hand across it and it like broke off so there's canvas underneath it. So, all right. Let's see. I know, it's so amazing. I just love it. Okay, so recommend I also recommend coming back to a PS half hour after pouring to check for hairs, dust, and pop bubbles again. Okay. So we're at 720, so at about 750, come back and and hit it with the heat gun. Hit it with the the whatchamacallit, the oh golly, I'm looking right at it. Um the torch. There we go. If you use silicone in your paintings, you definitely need to clean it. I love using it to clean resin pieces. Okay. Oh, I know I hate that. Desert pores. I had the worst fruit flies this summer. And it they came, I think they came on a bunch of bananas that I bought. And I could not get rid of them. I mean, I had the most immaculate kitchen because I was scrubbing and cleaning. I sealed off my sinks because I thought they were coming out of the sink. I had, I took my garbage. I didn't even fill up my garbage can. I, anything garbage, I put it in a little shopping bag and threw it out in the garbage right away. 
and they just would not go away and they were getting in my paintings they were getting just everywhere it was awful but you probably being in the desert you probably have bigger bugs than i could ever even imagine except for mosquitoes our mosquitoes get pretty big up here in minnesota okay I wipe with blue paper towels several times, then alcohol several times, then seal with the spray, then coat with resin. Okay. See, I can't use the spray. That's my problem. I am using my greenhouse with four shelves to dry it during the winter. Um. So if I don't want to, if I can't use the seal, the spray, Um, see, I'm wondering if, because I use um, water and Dawn dish soap on a rag and then wipe it down and then just plain water and wipe it down and then I let it dry for 24 hours and then that's how I sealed that other one, but I can't imagine sealing all those, well, speaking of bugs, you little booger. Anyway, um, what was I saying? I sealed uh, two paintings, and I was just like lightheaded, and I don't, I just, I, I can't use it. Um, of course, it was a brand that I'm not used to. I, I know Rust-Oleum spray paints I can use, Krylon paint spray paints I can't. I don't know if it's something different in their propellant, but cry. Um, Rust-Oleum spray paints I can use with the window open or outside and I'm fine. But as soon as I use the anything other than that, other than Rust-Oleum, like the spray paints I use at work, mm -mm, can't have them around me. I get instant migraine. Instant. I can't use the spray because of my it triggers my migraines. And I'm out for like four or five hours and I just don't want to use that. No, I don't want to do that. And also because the weather, it's been raining like every day here. And then, of course, I live in Minnesota, so it's going to be like 30 below outside. So I suppose I could spray them outside and then bring them in, but it still has the off-gassing and stuff too. And that's still, I can still smell it. Some will use cornstarch. I generally are, use a quick, quick dry polyurethane spray. I wonder if... I wonder if I could just use one of my poly, um, but just do a pour over with some of my poly because I've got poly acrylic and just maybe just do a, a quick pour over um, with a Wooster brush. Yeah, it was cloudy and rainy all day here today. Well, it was sunny for a little while, at least in my area. See, I have a respirator, and the respirator, I'd have to wear the respirator for like four hours. Because even the off-gassing gets me. I don't know what it is about spray paint. It Even the spray adhesives. It's something in the propellant is what I'm thinking. Um, our paint department at work, I can't go back and paint um, when the paint line's running. Because there's some chemical back there that just triggers my migraines. I went back there the other day, and... But I had to because it's one of those things where it's part of my job and um, I had a headache for the rest of the day. And I can find it. I'm one of those weird people where I can function with pain because I'm so used to it. And I get when people have fibromyalgia and they get migraines and I, I don't get, I get halos if it's really bad, but I don't go blind. I do... I do have like ringing in my ears if it's if it's really bad and I get like halos and stuff but I can still function because my ex-husband didn't believe me that I had that I had migraines until I was diagnosed with them and then he's like oh okay so I was raising my kids on my own basically because he wouldn't help me when I had a migraine so I just got used to it and then after I had my migraine when I was pregnant with Cece, I, he actually brought me to the emergency room because I would not leave the bed. And for like three days I didn't leave the bed. That's also when we found out I was pregnant. So they gave me morphine. 
because I knew it wouldn't hurt the baby. It was kind of cool. I'm having more fun playing in this than anything else. That's why I'm just kind of getting the sides again. All right, I want to show, I, I should have showed you a before picture. That was kind of silly of me. Okay, so let's show you an after picture at least. Well, I'm going to get my hands off full of resin anyways. Ooh. Do they, okay, a triple, see, I'll show you the one I have here. Hang on. And I use that one, and but it doesn't, doesn't do what I want it to do. Okay, you're probably going to see a reflection of my phone. So, look at that gold pop in there, though. Guys, holy Toledo. That's so cool. And it's like glass. Okay, I'm excited. There's that one. And then this one just has a little bit of gold in it. I'll put the links in the description box. I hope I remembered that there was no resin in these colors. I don't think there are. Or not resin. Silicone. Dimethicone. Okay, that's dripping on the other one. That's no bueno. Okay. So we have two here. And I'll grab that other. Let me grab that spray paint. It's right here. Hang on a second. Let me wipe these off so I can. Wow, there. this is like forever work time. <laughs> like way longer than what I'm used to. Okay, I'm going to move these off. Urgh. have things stacked up precariously because I'm getting that shelf tomorrow so I've been rearranging stuff and going okay this is going on the shelf and this is going on the shelf but this is the clear coat that I have it's fast drying non-yellowing UV resistant that's why I grabbed it because I do use the 2x spray paint um, a lot I have a, a painting technique that I do with clay based paints spray paint, vinegar, and water, and alcohol, and it does this really cool crackling and stuff, and it's really fun. So, this is what I have for clear coat. I do have a, la a spray lacquer, but I used that this summer, and I used it outside, and I left it outside for like 24 hours. So, I hope resin peels up like other stuff does. Uh-oh. I gotta move some stuff here before it gets all dripped on. <laughs> no bueno. I work with on um, first shift. There's some Hispanic people that work there, and so I always say no bueno. <laughs> they laugh at me because I'm so American. <laughs> I'm just so American. But I can cut this plastic off. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so let's see. Rustoleum trickle triple thick spray. I want uh, Am I dripping off the, on the floor too now? No. Okay. Um, Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Spray. Where do you get that? Do you get that at a hardware store like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards? There's your giggles, Jason. Um, or is that something that you buy at like Michael's? Because I've heard of the Triple Thick, but I thought it was more like a glue. Um, having to wipe. I know. I don't have to deal with it anymore, so... I got a good guy, and well, right now I'm I, I'm I'm with a guy, but I live alone, so it's hard. I love the uh, whole can for one painting layer, top of layer. Okay, well, sorry, I'm scrolling through your comments here. 
personally don't like. Really? See, I, I mean, I could see where if you want to just, you know, do like, you want to do multiple layers to give it dimension. I could see that. But for me, um, some of the things that I want to do with this, in fact, I wonder if I can scrape some of this up. Alright, these have cornstarch in them, but Ooh. do I have a brush here? I had a brush over here. I thought, hang on. I'm gonna brush as much of the cornstarch out as I can. Because I, when I do paper clay, I use cornstarch. This is one of my favorite. Oh, D, this is a IOD mold. This is one of my favorite ones. So I'm just wondering if I can scrape some of this up and put it in there. I'll put it in here. There's a lot on the table. Oh, I got some paint in there. That's okay. Hmm. Let's see. I didn't put any support in the middle of the canvas. There's no... My American is showing. <laughs> Number five plastic. I don't know if that's what this is or not. Okay, Walmart. Okay, I have a Walmart right by me. I just want to see how it looks in these little guys. I realize I'm messy. It's okay. I usually take a emery board or some sandpaper and sand off the edges once they come out of the mold. And these are nice molds. They're really nice and thick. So Great way to use up some of my resin that I had left over. And I don't care if there's paints, because I usually put these on like a gypsy bottle or, um, or a piece of artwork. And then I paint over them. So if it has a little bit of paint in it, as long as it sets up hard, I don't care. I don't even know if you can see this far over. Um, let's do it this way. I'll fill this one up next. Okay, so I'm going to um, look for it at the good Walmart. Not the one I live by, but there's one by my house. But that one is so ghetto and... I, I don't shop at Walmart usually anyways. I usually get all the stuff that I need at Aldi or at Cub, which is a grocery store here in the Midwest. Um, and if I can't find it there, usually Menards has it. And if I can't find it at Menards, then I'll break down and go to Walmart. Because Walmart is actually the furthest thing away from me. There's a one really nice one in Andover. Jason's been to that one. We went to the one in, in Coon Rapids here too, but... Like I said, it's ghetto. 
and I don't like going in there because the people there are rude. The people that work there are rude. The people that shop there are rude. It's like, you know, I don't need your shenanigans. All right, let's see if we can fill this one up. The thing I like about these molds too, they're silicone, so all this excess resin will just peel right off. I love that. Because I have used this with the the cheesy resin from from Michael's. Nope, that one got a lot of paint in it. I don't want that much paint in it. Alright, hang on one second. I'm having too much fun playing in the goop. <laughs> See, if I don't fill all the cavities up, I can I, you know, if it's Krylon, I can try it outside and leave it outside for um and then bring it inside and just have a fan on it blowing out the door. I gotta clean my fan though, it's really dusty. I can figure it out. If it's something that's gonna work, I wanna try it. And I'll figure it, you know, I'll figure out my health issues. I'm okay with it. I mean, there were some fragrance oils when I was making candles and stuff. Pumpkin spice is one of them. Man, I think that's probably why I don't like pumpkin spice. That and I had a bad experience as a child with pumpkin pie. Ugh. Ugh. But, um, there's pumpkin spice and then there was one called, um, Witch's Brew or something. And that had... It smelled really good, but when you, it was it was strong and... Man, when you had it like in a in a liquid form, like in soap or in especially in candles. And sadly it was one of my my friends' favorite, you know, like people that would come in. It was their favorite. And I'm like, no, that means I gotta make more of these. Okay. I don't have oh, there's some right there. I'm making a mess and I'm having fun doing it. Okay, that's good. That's good enough for me. As I go back for more. I was going to try and fill the whole thing, but if I got half of it, I can use still use the one half. And it's, although it is self-leveling, so we'll see what happens. Whoa. Going around. Going around town. Sorry, Spongebob. I watched hours upon hours of Spongebob when my kids were little. There's more adult humor in that show than should be po than should be legal. Okay. I just got it on my pants, too, now. My pants have been broken in. I got resin on my pants now. Alright. So... I actually got this thing all the way full. Move it down a little bit. There. Good deal. Let's scrape it back that way. Okay. I'll put those back in there. Where'd my rig go? Oh, I threw it away. Okay. gallon of resin from Michael's for $36 do you need to oh dude that's right they have the other um the big things because now the thing is the turning what are they called the tumblers the t where you do the the coffee coffee mugs <coughs> see patchouli I can do patchouli I'm fine stone coat art coat food safe yes food safe Yes. Um, except for like cutting boards and stuff like that, you wouldn't want to put it on that because you don't want to inject. On things that are 
not being ingested on. So like if you put it on the outside of a coffee mug, you'd be fine. Golly, I wish I was there. $99 down to 36. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, but Jason and I went to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> He'd never been to a Hobby Lobby before, so I'm like, oh, we gotta we gotta christen you into the Hobby Lobbyness. And uh they had this big, huge tote thing. It was like this big by like this big and this deep and it has all these compartments and, and things that click and lids and stuff. Normally it's sixty dollars and I got it for eight bucks because they had it mislabeled for like sixteen fifteen ninety nine because it's supposed to be fifty nine ninety nine but they marked it at fifteen ninety nine and I had my forty percent off coupon so I got it for like eight dollars eight or nine dollars I was like yes I need to take him with shopping with me more often because I find all the cool stuff when I'm with him. I told my nephew if they watch Spongebob, their brain would shrink. I love Spongebob. Patrick is my hero. The FDA says food safe, but really, I'd say only incidental. Yeah. No, don't cut on it. And, like, if you're going to, if you do it on, like, a cutting, like, a serving tray, have something in between it. I do that even with, even with metal trays or plastic trays. I put some kind of doily or, you know, some kind of paper, wax paper, parchment paper or something. Because you can take a pinking shears and cut a piece of parchment paper and have it have a cool, e cool edge. And then put it in a bowl, in a resin bowl or a plastic bowl. And, you know, keep your food from being contacted on it. You know, I just, I don't know, I don't trust people. Just because the government says it's safe doesn't mean it is. I mean, they're trying to ban flavored vape juice. And it's like, look, guys, are you not reading your own damn research? <clears throat> so I'm going to go put this guy on the shelf over here. I was supposed to make more shelves this week, but every time I get ready to go outside with my saw, it's raining. <laughs> God, dang it. We're going to have a very, we're either going to have a very dry winter or a very wet winter. It's not going to be like an average winter. It's going to be like severely one or the other. And I think this one's a little off kilter. Okay, so we're at 7.44. You know, I'm not, a, I used to be like anti-Hobby Lobby because the whole, you know, women's reproduction thing. But now it's like, okay, I go in, I buy their clearance stuff. <laughs> and I buy like their, their stuff that's like 50% or more off. Or I use my 40% off coupon because I found that they have a lot of stuff. Plus, I literally live a mile away from one. A mile. And Michael's is like three miles. And the Michael's that I live by is really small. They don't have all the stuff. I don't know what the deal is. But Hobby Lobby, um, you can find some really good deals there. The painting, the, the, the print that I found of... I call it me and Jason's painting. Um, I found it there for $5. Online it sells for $45. So, uh, it's one of Guinevere and Lancelot. So, because it was kind of funny because I met him when I was married and he was just getting out of a marriage. So, it was kind of, kind of fitting. Yeah, you should be good with the coffee mugs. I've actually looked at, um, looked into building one of those little spinner guys because, um, um, what is it? Sandmar is one of the major distributors for like t-shirts and tumblers and stuff like that in bulk. And they're right, 
down the road from me. So it's like a half hour, 45 minute drive from me. So, um, and I can go visit a friend while I'm down there. So, cause it's down in Shakopee. My favorite shirt that I have owned for about 15 years is SpongeBob and Metallica. Oh my God, that'd be awesome. That'd probably be the only Metallica shirt I'd ever own. His laugh drives me nuts. I love it though. See, Patrick though, Patrick. Spongebob can get annoying, yes, but Patrick. The bowels of my mind are enigma. In Arizona, 51 degrees in the morning and 93. Well, yeah, because you guys get really cold at night in the wintertime. My friend Lane, who was a truck driver, used to um, live there. And he would tell me horror stories about the lightning storms and stuff. And I'm like, dude, okay, now I see why you don't like lightning. Within a mile of me are gas stations and recreational. <laughs> where do you live? I want to know where you live. Isn't... Landed on your head. What landed on your head? I don't remember. I visited my cousin in Phoenix. It was 114 and fire started on their own. Yep. I was in Barstow, California once. I will never go back to the desert again. I didn't know you lived in Colorado. Lisa, you're holding out on me. <laughs> I lived in Denver for like a year and a half. And then I lived in Colorado Springs for about six months. Well, less than six months. January, well, February, March, April, May, June. Five months. Yeah, the picture. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a bar, that's a bad thing about having um some I live in an apartment building that was built in 1965 or 1967 and it's all cement. All my walls, like this wall over here, that's cement. And that's why I have pegboard like drilled I made a frame for the pegboard and then drilled it into the table. So that's why it's like wibbly wobbly because I can't put it against the wall. So I'm going to move this table over to that wall and um, put another table up just for pouring. And I'm going to put another shelf on the other side over here. I'm going to put another shelf and that's where I'm going to put all my acrylic pour paint stuff. And then that way I can um, drop plastic over it, over this area um, when I'm sanding inside, if I have to sand, or uh, even when I'm sanding outside. I try to sand outside, but if it's raining and I really need to get stuff done, that's going to be me next week because I have a lot of sanding and sawing and stuff to get done. I don't have time for this rainy weather stuff, so I'm probably going to do it inside. Oh, man. So you know what I'm talking about when I say, go on, what's that little creek? Clear Creek. Clear Creek. Going down Clear Creek. I probably still have chips in my tailbone from going down that creek. Grew up in Goldman, now live in Manitou Manitou Springs. Okay, I know exactly where that's at. Or maybe not exactly, but a very good idea. First summer that we were here, it got to 121. My wife's shoes melted crossing a parking lot. Yeah. No. No. Uh, bless your heart for living out there. But um, I like heat, but I don't like to melt. It's funny because you guys could probably fry an egg on your parking lot. And then there's us who we crack an egg and it'll freeze before it'll hit the parking. Or it'll freeze as it's coming out of the, the egg. Because when it's 50 below outside, yeah, that's what happens. When we had that uh, cold vortex or whatever they were calling it last winter. Yeah, you did not leave outside of your house without having everything covered. At least with two layers. Coors. Yep, Clear Creek feeds Coors. That water is cold, even in July. That mountain runoff water is cold, but it felt so good on those 90, 100 degree days. Oh, man. Want to go to Hot Spring? It's on my bus. Dad, that's one of the things. <laughs> it was funny because I was driving a car, and it was a Minnesota car, and it wasn't geared or 
fixed or whatever for um for um Colorado elevation and it would it would overheat and break down do it it did not want to go up the mountain we never made it past uh Buffalo Bill's grave that exit on off of what it interstate is it I90 no it's not I90 I70 we never made it past that exit on I70 so my daughter and I are actually um Yep, west side of Colorado Springs. Yep. The bomb cyclone? I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, no. If you have injuries, yeah, cold is not good. Coors is okay. Coors is best um on tap in Denver. <laughs> That's the best beer I've ever had is when I, and then there's, there's Coors Plant and then there's a little microbrewery and they, 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 their little catchphrase is we're the second largest my uh, brewery in Golden, Colorado, which I think it's cute. So, but there's just so many shops down in Golden and really good restaurants and man, I miss Golden. I don't miss Colorado Springs though. I don't miss that place at all, but that's probably because I had bad experiences there and people there weren't very friendly and it just seemed like a very sad city just sad just sad people sad just sad things yeah okay the storm we just had an in intense cold i mean the actual cold weather the actual temperature outside was 50 below in like in like duluth it was like 40 below here the actual temperature that in, didn't include wind chill with wind chill it was like 60. where do you have hot springs at blue worked at course for 30 years that seemed like a cool it was a really i did the we did the course tour like three times Oh, it's West of Us and some five hours right to the east. Well, that's a long drive to go for Hot Springs. That has to be a weekend trip. Maybe we'll do, we'll do that when I come up in the spring. Yeah, it, it's definitely, well, and you know what, though, the, even though a military town, I lived in Rapid City, and that's a military town, too, and for the most part, people were nice there. Colorado Springs, everybody was, like, sad and grumpy. And, I mean, I met, like, two people there that I would actually consider friends. Like, people that I would actually want to... Thomas is one of them, one of my, my friend Thomas. He was, like, the one only person that I would talk to again. I know, Hot Spring would be amazing right now. We did the regular tour, like, the first two times, because the first time we went through, it would, they were making Keystone. I'm like, that's lame. We're coming through this again some other time, because I want them to see actually make cores. I came to the cores plant to see them make cores. So we came back again, and they were making Keystone Light. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so I asked the, the people at the end, I'm like, when do they actually make cores? Because I want to see that. <laughs> and they said, like, Tuesday or something. So we can't, went through on a tu Tuesday. And then we came back for the for the quick tour. So yeah, we did it like four times in like three months. <laughs> fifty negative fifty was yeah. Your back hurt. I'm so sorry you have that problem. I have a pinched nerve in my back right now. So and I and I'm just like I breathe through it. But I can't imagine having a back injury and having to have surgery and all that. Mm -mm. Nope. No thank you. Bless your heart. I can't go in the freezer. Oh, I get ya. When they had the air conditioning too cold, that's when my knee starts to hurt and my shoulders. Road trips to the next hot springs. I know, but you realize it's 15, from my front door to his front door is 14, 1,497 miles. 
so 1,497 miles. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to want to drive anymore after I get there, but he does have his driver's license. He just doesn't have a car, so he can drive the car. <laughs> <laughs> and we can go to the hot springs and go sit in the hot springs and then get a hotel room or go camping or something. Uh. Oh my gosh. 12 herniated discs. What happened to you? Were you in a car accident? I'm so sorry. That happened. Oh. Well, at least, you know what? At least you have your art. I, um... I saw that you posted a video today. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. I'm gonna, that's one of the things that I was gonna do is catch up on all the videos that I missed today. So, but at least you do beautiful art and you have something positive in your in your life. And it sounds like, you know, you got good things going. You live in the desert. I would love, you know, in the winter time where it doesn't get so hot, I wouldn't mind visiting. I'm just, I'm kind of leery because I don't like scorpions. I got a bad scare from one, and I'm kind of scared of them. When we were in Barstow, we were out feeding the horses, and one scurried across my foot, and I was wearing um, just tennis shoes, and, you know, nothing, like, protective, you know, nothing like leather or anything, and it scurried across my foot, and it scared the crap out of me, and, and I screamed like a girl. I don't have a, it just startled me and I didn't know what it was. And then I saw it go scampering away and I'm like, dude, that was a scorpion. It could have killed me. You know, I'm like 12. Well, 14. <laughs> well, you know what? I can get to Denver in 14 hours. 13 if I really push it. But I'm one of those tall people that I need to get out and stretch every couple of hours and go potty. When I, I, I actually need to go, I, Ariana and I are going to go to Las Vegas and we're trying to decide, or I'm trying to decide if we want to fly or if we want to just drive through. And I'm like, well, April isn't really, because it's going to be the first week in April. And I'm not sure if I want to drive through Colorado in April going through the mountains. I don't want to risk a, uh, uh, a blizzard up in the mountains. So, I don't know. We're still on the fence about that. I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly. If I was meant to fly, I would have been hatched with wings. So... <laughs> Paratrooper in the army. Thank you for your service, sir. You know what? You're doing a great job, even if you're new to the art. So, you're doing great. Much better than I did. <laughs> I didn't even post my first video or pictures of my first... I posted pictures of my first paintings that actually turned out. The one I did for Valentine's Day. I have that hanging in my office. But, um, or bedroom, my bedroom slash, slash office slash living room slash storage area. Coyotes don't bother me so much because they usually stay away from humans because we have coyotes here in Minnesota. Rattlesnakes don't bother me because they usually stay away from humans. Spiders, same thing. Scorpions do too. I mean, all the little critters stay away, but I just, I don't know. I don't want another scare like that. I mean, that was 30 years ago. I was still, anytime you mention the word scorpions, even the band name used to just make my heart flutter. It's just like, no. Yeah, Nan and I are going, Ariana, the one that I did my live with um, a couple months ago. And now that I got resin, she's going to come and do another live with me. But, um, um. We're going to the Artisan Summit in April. And now that I've got my financial situation figured out, um, I'm buying the tickets at the end of this month. And I'm paying for the hotel room at the end of December. And by the end of January, I have to decide if I'm going to do, if we're going to fly or what. So here's me not even doing anything, just talking to y'all. Yeah, we have timber wolves here 
And when I lived up north, um, we had one that was in our driveway. And it's, sincerely, it's paw print was like that. That's how big that woof was. It was as big as my hand. His paw print was as big as my hand, minus the, you know, the knuckles here. Snakes, spiders, and clowns. Clowns don't bother me either. The only thing that really bothered me, like really, really, like I will freak, freak, freak out is centipedes. I think centipedes are gross. Okay, I'm going to torch these one more time. There's another notification. Aliens are coming. So I'm going to torch this one more time because you said about half hour. And it's been about a half hour because we've been chatting. I'm just going to give it a quick once over. Because I actually saw a little bubble on the corner over here on this one. So I'm going to get the corner. Make sure I get that. I don't have any bugs. This is kind of like difficult to see. Okay, I think I got it all. Those are going to look so cool. If they dry just like this. I might have to do one more coat, though, because I look like I, well, maybe not. Maybe that's just set up more. It could be the light. Oh, it's just, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. I, you know, because I was like, oh, what if it doesn't look the same? But this is the same stuff that Marcy used, so I figured, well, what the hell, I'll just go for it. Gets you off the couch. Yep. Hi, Tina. I know. I was just saying, thinking it's got to it's gotta be time for Marcy's life. Here's me just babbling. We're just babbling. We're having a good old time. So, hey, let's finish this up. And go over, we'll meet all up in Marcy's life at Mixed Media Girl on YouTube. Look for hair and dust too. Easier to see them if you're looking at the glare and the light. So, let's all head over there. So, before you head out, smash that like button, y'all. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you, especially you, Elisa. Thank you for all your help. You're my hero. You're my resin queen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to put a link to your uh, channel down below, Desert Arts 2. Who else was here? Artistically Random was here for a second, so I'll put hers down there too. I want to promote you all. We want to get you all going. That is one trick that I learned, so I'll explain that more later. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Peace, love, and happiness, y'all.